Good morning, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. It's get ready with me time and the focus of this video, uh, drugstore products that I feel very strongly about. I think they're even better than high end. There are a lot of situations in this video where I'm going to use a product. I'm going to think of a high end thing that I just don't think measures up quite as well. So I've got a full face all pulled together here. I put it in my trusty little bag. Felt like bringing the fuzzy leopard headband back into the mix today. Oh, and I do even have an inspiration picture for the eye look. I saw this on Pinterest. Normally all I really use Pinterest for is recipes. Like Pinterest is my recipe book. That's where I go to find my crock pot meals and my other kinds of recipes and my casseroles and whatever. But I noticed some pretty like eye looks were popping up on my homepage and one of them I thought I have to do this. It's just kind of a basic looking top part of the eye. There's a lash and then there's this amazing like smoky emerald green lower lash line. I thought I can do that. I'm doing that today and I'm making it part of this drugstore look. So to get things started here, I have just my skincare on. Also, pimple patches. Oh my gosh, do those work. For like the second or third time, I used one of those last night and this this is just flat. This was a problem yesterday and it's just flat. And then I got a little one down here um, by the corner of my mouth, but it's become a non-issue thanks to the pimple patch. You know, I can see it a little bit. I can see evidence of it, but it's not like a flared up problem anymore. I don't know why I'm breaking out a bit there, but it has been that time of the month, so sometimes that happens. But anyways, we're gonna jump into primer. I love this glowy primer, and I was thinking about how, like, when I get out that Kosas one, the Glow IV, how, I don't know, over the top it can be. I don't wholeheartedly dislike that product, but I think, wow, like, I gotta be careful with it. And this one, so thin, so lightweight. I just dab it all around. This is in the shade light. And then grab a little dense brush and blend it in. And the skin looks so radiant, but what you've put on is so light and easy. Look at this. It could not blend easier, but I don't feel like I've got a ton of thickness on the skin right now. It's totally my favorite kind of product of this type, this glowy primer thing that's going on. I feel like everybody's got one, but this is my favorite. And anytime I use this, I usually have better staying power, like a better staying power day with various foundations on top. Speaking of foundation, okay, what did I choose today? Oh, I chose this old trusty one, my L'Oreal True Match Nude Hyaluronic Tinted Serum. 100% I'm gonna repurchase this. I'm low in the bottle and I've put the pump on and I'll just take this pump off and I'll put it on my new bottle when I get it. Light 2-3 is my shade. I love this stuff. It's more coverage than you think something called Nude Hyaluronic Tinted Serum is gonna be. It lasts really well on my skin. It has this natural look, I you know, straight up medium coverage, but it's like that perfect middle ground, not too matte not too glowy. And frankly, this was the catalyst for this video because a couple days ago I was wearing my Makeup by Mario foundation and I think Mario's got a lot of great things in his line, but I got a bone to pick with this foundation because my skin looked awful by the end of the day, like just so greasy, so broken down, just not good at all. And I thought about this and I thought, you know, <laughs> from the drugstore, fraction of the price, I could definitely trust this stuff. So I'm going to pump out about a full pump, and yes, this does come with a dropper originally, so you could use that if you wanted to. But I like pumping it out and I can see every time that I'm doing like the full pump. And then I've been playing around with my little Profusion dense brush sometimes too to blend out my foundation. It's just like a Real Techniques Expert face brush. Uh, yeah, this is a terrific foundation. And I love how it pairs with that primer. I know that was the whole like centerpiece of a past video was that combo. I like Lumi Glotion underneath it too. But yeah, uh, this has been around for a while. It's been raved on by many people, but if you haven't tried it yet, Here's your sign. Look how pretty this is coming off. And the shade is so good too, you know. And we're just making sure we get it all blended. I tell you what, when my alarm went off this morning, I did not know what day it was. No idea, like I really had to think about it. What day are we on? Such a deep sleep. And usually it doesn't happen that way. Usually I'm kind of like waking up 
a minute or two before it's time. And I'm just sitting there for those couple minutes thinking, oh, it's about to happen, it's about to happen. But yeah, I was out. I was sleeping hard. I'm surprised I don't have some major sheet creases on my face, but there we go. Then a great concealer that, yeah, if you put me in a lineup with this and any of the shape tapes and the wizard of makeup was like, you can only keep one of these in your collection. And this was lined up with every version of shape tape. I still think I'd take the e.l.f. hydrating camo concealer. I really do. This is in light peach. I repurchased this fairly recently. I love it. I love the coverage. I love the way it ends up looking after I blend it out, like in terms of just not too thick, kind of natural looking on the skin. Just quality stuff. Definitely goes above and beyond that $6 price tag. I'm jumping back to my e.l.f. duo brush for this. Maximize your coverage, everyone. Take your little dots and make them go further. And while I blend out this concealer, I would like to say, who knows about Rural King or Farm King? Okay, where I grew up in West Central Illinois, it was Farm King. Um, some of you might have stores called Farm and Fleet. I don't know if those are similar too, but down here in Southern Illinois, these stores are called Rural King. And you're thinking, is this just a farm supply kind of store? Well, you would think, but no. And I was reminded of that when I went to a Rural King over the weekend. See, we had a neighbor who saw me and Bubba outside and he was using like this little toy leaf blower he has, but it's broken. Um, it's not blowing anymore. And she's like, you know, they have toy blowers at Rural King. And I said, Oh, really? That's a birthday coming up. So I was like, I'm going to try to find that. I had the girls with me and we went to Rural King and I was reminded of my old like Farm King experiences. You go in there, there's free popcorn. There's little chicks that you can go watch. Like little fluffy peep, peep, peep chicks. A surprising, surprising stash of foods, snack foods, specific ingredients, spices, all this random stuff. I even found my old favorite salsa brand that I can't find anywhere else, the Red Cactus brand. I left with chips and dips. We did not find the blower. They were out of those. Bub was able to find one of those at an Ace Hardware. But anyways, I joined the dang loyalty program. I mean, they're like, do you want to be a loyalty member? I said, yes. I love it. They also had a lot of pumpkins out front. Yeah, I'll be going back. I love my experience there. I love the idea of roaming a store, munching on free popcorn, and they had buy the popcorn. I've never experienced this. Tell me if I need to have this. They had like little cones of warm cashews and maybe pecans, other kinds of nuts, like in a warmer. What? I don't know. I would like to know in the comments section, what is this kind of store called where you live? And do you love it? I love it. I mean, the girls and I walked out of that place. We were just giddy. <laughs> okay, so that concealer is all blended in. And I, seriously, look at that under eye. I mean, it looks so good, but you wouldn't even be able to point out the makeup. It's just looking like skin. Moving on to the setting powder. I do have some high-end setting powders that I think are very good. I think Laura Mercier Ultra Blur is amazing. I also like her pink version of the powder. I mean, there are some good high-end setting powders, but I have one from Givenchy. Same shape as this powder here. And if I were comparing that one to this one, it's got the four pastel tones in it. And if I were picking one that I think looks better on my skin, I would say the Maybelline Fit Me and Fair looks better on my skin than that. Maybe I just got the wrong color tone. Maybe those pastels just aren't where it's at, but I love some Fit Me. And I've been reaching for this more than anything else these days. So yeah, she gets to be in the drugstore video. I'm baking. I mean, I'm not going to let it sit there forever, but I'm being generous today. That's just how I feel. I'm just in a mood. Once I figured out what day it was, man, uh, off and running. Rural King. Man. We do our light bake, aka microwave, where we just kind of dust it away real quick. I take my Morphe under eye bullet brush and I just go whoop. And I feel bright and I feel really, really even in this area. I mean, we are using an all-star drugstore cast today. And then all over the skin, I want to set a little bit too, because I just, I want this look to have good staying power. 
one day like when you get burned the day before on staying power <laughs> I had an itch on the tip of my nose and I just scratched it with my makeup brush. When you get burned by bad staying power the previous day, you go in the next day just like take no prisoners. Covergirl Outlast Extreme Wear Press Powder. Um, this is kind of a powder foundation-y type of powder so you don't want to go too hard with it. Um, it does say full coverage on it and I have the shade Creamy Natural and it's a really nice feeling powder, soft, um, will cover can be used just with something super light like a barely there tinted moisturizer and this will add a lot of coverage. What I'm doing is just getting a little bit on my brush and taking it over the areas where I don't have the fit me. So over this whole plane of the face and I'm gonna hit the forehead with it too. It's just gonna make everything last super duper well. I also could have chosen the red cap foundation. I mean that's a great one too. You know how I feel about that. Check it out. Okay, the skin is looking awesome. Now we're gonna move on to bronzer. And I recently traveled with a mini size of the NARS Laguna bronzer and it's, it's good, okay? Like Laguna is fine, it's been around a long time, it does the job, but really if I had to choose, if somebody laid that one out alongside Hard Candy Instant Summer in tan and said, keep one, I'm keeping this. I think this has an even more buttery texture, even more softness to it. And I just always, without fail, love the way this looks across the skin, okay? If I'm not doing like some kind of a stick cream contour process, or even if I am, sometimes I top it off with this, this just can handle the whole job on its own. So here we are just bronzing up the forehead. This is matte and it just feels luxurious. It really does. I would highly recommend this. And then contour, we want it to not be too low. Placement, placement, placement. Oh yeah. Another key gift for Bubba's birthday was a scooter that's like the girls' scooters. See, my kids are just big scooter kids. They love swooping out of the driveway and going down our little not too busy street. And he had one that was like a little radio flyer scooter that could go from a little thing you could sit on, probably ideal for an even younger child. And then it also transformed to a scooter, but it's super loud. These hollow wheels, you know, it just wouldn't go as fast as the girls. And so I got him one that's like theirs, has these light up wheels, it's heavy. Like it's really a good scooter. I can link down below to what these scooters are. Like I built it myself and he loves it and he's doing so well on it. And I like these comfortable fall evenings we've been having where we can have dinner and then we go out. They just scoot down the street back and forth. I'm gonna just gently give the nose a little something there. I don't think it needs a lot. Love it. Absolutely love it. Next up, I wanted to pull out a cream blush that I really think I need to pay more attention to. And I think it can totally hang with some of these high-end sticks. It's this line from Milani called Supercharged. And yes, they do sell this on Ulta's website. Supercharged Cheek and Lip Multi-Stick. And I have this shade called Spice Jolt and it's so smooth and creamy. It makes me think of a Persona stick, but a little more sheer. Really is probably a more close comparison to a Merit Flush Balm. That's what those are called, right? So I've taken this up kind of high over here on the cheek, and you see this pretty easily blendable. I'm not struggling at all. I'm just stippling right over it. I'm trying to keep it high. I'm trying to keep it up here. So I wanna know about Halloween and if your family dresses up as a whole unit or does everybody choose their own thing? Because we were a unit for our trunk or treat the, at the cheer gym a couple weeks ago. We were all woodland creatures. So we have some cute pictures where we're all like, you know, the same type of thing. And we did a real long-term commitment to Disney for a couple years. We did the villains one year and then we did the good guy alternatives of those characters the next year. But yeah, we did the woodland creature Thing, and now for trick-or-treating, they all want to be just their own thing. Belle wants to be an angel. Biddy wants to be an old lady. <laughs> Her costume is hilarious. And Bubba just wants to still be the bear that he was 
for the trunk or treat. So that's our random assortment this year, which I think is fine and fun. So I've blended this in. You see what I mean? How it like gives a little glow to the surface of the skin. My skin is not tacky, but the blending is really easy and it feels a lot like those Merit balms. And this shade, if you wanted to put it on your lips as well, here's what it looks like. It's creamy. Mmm. Nice. And I kind of want to take a little more blush over the top of this because I just feel like it's going to suit this look really well if I add a little bit of my Daring Rosewood from the L'Oreal Infallible line, which I'm sure you could compare this up against a number of high-end blushes too. But I'm just swirling a little bit of that right out here. Look what that did. The Milani just grabbed it. See that? Mmm, that toasty spicy cheek. And if you want to, if you feel like you've put on, you know, a strong blush, take a brush that you typically use for powder, like this is my Morphe under eye bullet brush that I kind of dust away the under eye loose powder with. Take that and work over the edges a bit and it kind of just softens. Okay, I like that. Do I need to do a highlighter today? I didn't really pull one out. I'll throw on a little bit of this Milani that I just recently raved on. This was in my drugstore makeup guide video last week. Oh my gosh. It's just so good. I'm focusing it ever since the AI video. I've been focusing my highlighter under my eye right in this area and I love the look so much. This is the strobe light highlighter afterglow. I never know if the name of the product is strobe light or afterglow but I'll link to the specific one that this is. This is just the light kind of pearly one and it's so pretty. If you got anything else on your brush, you know, you can come up here. It just makes the whole look of your skin look healthy. I can't believe I almost skipped this. Yeah. Mm. Next up, I'm going to do brows. I'm definitely going to use my Maybelline Brow Fast Sculpt because I think this is even better, even better packaging design, brush design than some of the more high-end brow gels that I have, the tinted ones. Like, it's better than Kosas Brow Pop. I think it's better than Benefit Gimme Brow. I think it's better than Lawless Hold Up Soft Set. Honestly, even though I like Glossier Boy Brow, I think it's truly, in a practical sense, it's a better product. It fills in better and it lasts longer. It has better hold than all of these. Okay, and then for my pencil fill-in, I mean, every bit as good as your high-end skinny brow pencils, I pulled out this Revlon Color Stay Micro, but I don't necessarily feel like this is the only drugstore thing that measures up in that way. This I have in medium brown. CoverGirl makes a good one. I've been burning through these, and I kind of don't care which one I use, but there's this one. There's CoverGirl's. L'Oreal has a good one. So just kind of take your pick if it's the right shade for you. Drugstore's loaded with great skinny brow pencils, and I say that all the time. I'm a broken record on that issue. And they have the spoolie on the other end, so you're in good shape. I ran across a post or an article or something from somebody the other day saying it's not normal. Like, not everyone has a song going through their head all the time. I do. Are you a person like that? Or do you not? Like, there's always a little background thing happening in my head, and it's sometimes the song that I heard last in the car or whatever. One song that I love, and I've listened to it a lot lately because we've had some difficult times lately, things my dad's been going through health-wise, and he was such a trooper through his first chemo session, and he's hanging in there great, but I found myself listening so much to Andy Grammer's Keep Your Head Up. I love that song. That song is like a it's a lifter. It's it's just a total lift. I've always got that going through my head. You gotta keep your head up. Oh, you can let your head down. Yeah. Okay, so where are we at here? I'm on autopilot. Well, what do I do there? Give myself an extra rogue brow hair. What? Um, then I'm just gonna brush through them. I think those are looking good. And then the brow fast sculpt. I mean, unbeatable. Medium brown is the shade I wear. Oh, I gotta get my flu shot. I've had all these random little things on my list that I'm trying to knock off. Just things like, oh, the girls got these cheer backpacks, but they need to get their names on them. You know, find an embroidery place, get them there. I did that yesterday. Get a flu shot. Need to get the girls their flu shots. Okie dokie. So now that brows are done, we're gonna prime with Milani Eyeshadow Primer, which is always my top choice. We always wanna be using this. And then the eyeshadow palette I picked is a Wet n Wild 10 Pan 
because we're going to be doing this like smoky emerald lower lash line. And I also have a liner that I pulled out. So what is the Wet n Wild better than? Many things, honestly. But I was thinking about some of like my little holiday palettes, like the Too Faced trio of palettes. They're really cute, but the quality isn't like even as good as this. This makes me think holiday vibes. It's got that dark green. It's the one called Lights Off. The dark green, it's got browns, it's got like this whole bottom row, grayish, smoky, so good. And then I was thinking of how I recently tried that new line of Buxom eyeliners that are kind of like this odd skinny rectangle shape and they break and they're dry and they don't go on well and then L'Oreal's got this infallible grip range that's so good and I think this is going to be a perfect like long wearing base for the lower lash line because it's got to wear a long time if you're putting it down there. This is the shade called Emerald Green. The upper part of the eye, if I go back to my little reference picture, uh, we can just do this however we want. We can use maybe some of this bronzy and brown. Um, it doesn't need to be too heavy or intense, I don't think. I'm going to first take just a little bit of of the gray, actually, because that seems the most mid tony And I'm just going to get that going in my crease. This is going to be fun. I haven't done a real intense lower lash line in a while. Oh, another song that's often going through my head just because it's like Bubba's favorite song is um, Shy Away from 21 Pilots. He's on to it in a big way. He loves that song. He got a little drum that was filled with like maracas and drumsticks and there's a harmonica in there, all kinds of things. And he takes those drumsticks out. And when that song goes on, he, he wants to watch like the music video of it. And when he watches that, he gets out the drumsticks and just starts banging around. I think we might have a future drummer in our lives. So here's that gray Look how nice that's looking. Nice natural shadow kind of shade down there on the lower row. Love that. I noticed Wet n Wild has some cute looking 10 pan palettes in this very same style on Ulta's website. Like a whole cute little holiday collection. I want them all. I really want to try them all. Um, I'm going to go to the bronze. So this has some shimmer, but it's like a deep bronze. And I'm going to just add this in up above. I really like how there's a bronziness on the upper part of the eye and then the bottom is just green. Look, just building it up. Need to build up more on the other eye now. I made chili in the crock pot on Sunday. So that'll be taking us through the week. And then I like Michaela Thomas's little meal prep recipes. I love just trying different ones. This week I did where you take the small potatoes and you cut them up and you roast those in your air fryer. They turn out perfectly. 400, 10 minutes, shake them, five minutes. I did exactly what she said. I bet we don't have the same air fryer. It, it turns out perfect every time. So, because sometimes those little potatoes are like the base for your meal. And I like following her recipes because it's a certain portion controlled amount that's supposed to go in there. And then you just do some ground beef, make you some onions or a little special like burger sauce type thing, some cheese, and it's like you've made this yummy little burger bowl and it tasted so good. Okay, I think we're done with that layer of things. Maybe I need a little more over here, huh? I'm just building up that bronze. And then maybe we take a little of the brown outer corner, just a little bit of this matte brown. I can tell I haven't used this particular palette a whole lot. Definitely not nearly as much as I've used Nude Awakening, but this is good. I'm enjoying this. Dark matte brown, pigmented, great. We don't want to get too intense with it up here. We want the lower lash line to really be the statement, but I'm just deepening it up in the outer corner. We'll come in with a smaller brush to soften. So I've got that dark brown just padded on the outer part of my lid. And now I'm going to go to this deep shimmer bronze. And I'm going to just use that to blend the outer corner. Just make the dark brown merge in with everything else. And it does that beautifully. Oh, wet and wild eyeshadows. I'm serious when I say the formula in those Too Faced holiday palettes doesn't really hold a candle to this. I think I'm gonna have a duds video coming up probably sometime soon because I wasn't thrilled with those. 
I wasn't thrilled with the Tarte four pack. Also wasn't thrilled with Tarte's, what you call it, the blush tape set. Those were a rip off. <laughs> I think I just need a little something on the inner lid and then we're ready to have some fun on the lower lash line. I think we're gonna do a little bit of this and then go into that shade maybe. So from here to here, there we go. So we're just laying down some of that bronze inner lid. It's not off the wall shimmery, but it's giving us a little glow. That would be a nice one shadow look, honestly. You know, you pull this out and you're like, okay, I can't do the whole smoky eye thing today. What's one shade I could use everywhere? That. Crease, lid, everywhere. Okay, next shade beside it. Oh, this is the one that has that little, like, kind of greenish iridescence. I'm not sure if brush is the best for it, actually. A yeah, brush can do it, but I want to do finger. It looks kind of more like a soft gold, but I think when it hits the light in certain ways, you might be able to see a little green. Okay, I'm just patting this on. I should just do it with the brush because I can't get in there. Yeah, brush is fine. Brush can do it. I think we slayed that top part of the eye. And this shade is a little bit pearly here at the end. Why don't you come in and do a little bit of brightening. Oh, I love wet and wild eyeshadows. Love it. Now for the lower lash line, I can see from my inspiration picture here, it's definitely green all the way up in the lower inner rim too. So we're going to do that with this L'Oreal Infallible Grip. These last really well on the waterline, by the way, and they do have a nude that does pretty darn good. But we're going to take this emerald, and I think this is just going to be the perfect shade. Oh my gosh, speaking of green, our little powder room, half bathroom, over the weekend, Bub repainted it this moody, dark green. Look up dark academia aesthetic, like I'm all about it. I love dark, okay? I really like dark walls. I like the vibe of it's dark and cozy on the inside. You got a little like soft lighting kind of thing. Dark richness. And what the vibe is, is like a deep green with gold accents. Like our mirror is now gold on the outside. Anything on the cabinet is gold. Um, our toilet paper holder is in the process of being gold. The whole catalyst for that was the old towel ring thingy that we had there was gouging our wall and we had a couple of gouges in our gray paint. That's just the way it was when we moved in. It was gray. It was fine. And Bub was like looking for the paint for that so he could go ahead and repair those areas. And I guess the paint wasn't good anymore. So he's like, do you want me to just redo the whole thing? And I'm like, actually, yeah, I kind of would. And here's exactly what I like. Do you like it? He's like, oh gosh, I love that. So we both agreed that it would look amazing and it does. So here we are with this green going on here. I put it on the inner rim and now I'm just taking this all over the actual lower lash line. And I was looking if there's any kind of wing. The lashes give you kind of a cat eye look, but I don't think there's really a pronounced wing anywhere. I will need to do some liner on the upper, but this will be one of those looks where maybe from a distance you don't notice this particular color intensity I got going on, but when you get up close, you will. Look at that. I really like this color of green. I don't want it to go down too low, but I want to make it count. I don't think it makes sense to be much lower than that. And then we'll get a little bit smoky because I'll go over it with some of that green shadow. Profusion small pointed. Just the tip of it going into that. And this is a really dark green, so I almost don't want to go too far with it because I think it may detensify the greenish look a bit from that liner. The liner is on point for the shade we want, and this is a bit dark. But I think I'll, if I focus it on the outside there, that's fine. Mm. I subconsciously am just coordinating with the bathroom. Okay, we do that. We need some eyeliner. I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. This is not drugstore, but I'm loving this chocolate shade of the Too Faced liner pen. I'm wanting to use it all the time. And I'm just gonna use that today, okay? I'm sure in that Sephora Colorful Wink It felt tip range, you know, I love that shade called Little Black Dress and it wears like iron. I'm sure they've got a dark brown. And that whole range, you know, is lower cost than 
the rest of the stuff at Sephora. So I should look into that. But for now, this is what I have. And this is what I want. Dark brown. Just taking it across. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just going across. My memory card decided to stop on me right as I was finishing that line, but there we are. I'm gonna throw up three mascara options that I'm currently thinking are better than a number of high-end ones that I have. CoverGirl Stretch and Strengthen, Exhibitionist. The CoverGirl Clean Topia, really good. And my Maybelline The Falsy Surreal. All of these are good about giving you the look of a lot of lashes, so a high volume lash look, and not requiring too many sweeps through to get there. I think I'm gonna use this one because I'm thinking I'm gonna have an empty soon on this. Oh, I forgot, it's downstairs, but I got a different lash curler to try from the drugstore. Hard Candy has one, and it's really cute, and I'm hoping it's good. I do love Shiseido, and by the way, if you want a gold Shiseido lash curler, the holiday ones are out. It's usually a holiday thing, and I believe you can get it at Sephora. One of my little best makeup buddies right there. So we're gonna do the falsies surreal, and then we're gonna do a falsies real, a real falsie on top. And I will do Cali Ray come hell or high water on the lower lashes just because it's going to need to be that way. I want it to last. This one is like my ideal look after about two coats. See that? I know there's a lot going on, but look how nice that looks. I think I should maybe just do a whole week of jewel toned lower lash lines because I love this. I could do navy. I could do plum. I could do kind of a burgundy thing maybe. Oh. I think from the day David told me to pulse my lash curler, I have done it. I've never stopped pulsing since that day. It's funny the things that stick with you. All right, come on left lashes. You know how to do it. When was the last time you got on Pinterest for eye makeup inspiration? There's a lot there. That'll do for a couple coats there. I'm gonna pop on my false lashes, which are looking like the Kiss Wispies style number 11. So just something that's kind of flared out at the ends. I'll put those on and I'll be right back. Okay guys, I've got my lashes on there. I did some lower lash mascara. I know you gotta get in kind of close to see that green, but the green is still there and I can definitely see it big time in person too. So I'm hoping this is going to be a great little lip combo here today. I adore the Hard Candy Insta Pout lip liners. They last so well. They've got great shades. I a lot of times talk about the color called Kiss and Tell which is kind of a deep warm nude. This one is a little bit cooler. It's called First Move and think like I don't know, the dustiest of dusty roses. Swirled in with a little brown and a little mauve. And I fill in my whole lips with this. I wiped off that Milani lip and cheek that I had on there, which was pretty. Mmm, look at that. And then I want some shine and shimmer. So I pulled out my Milani Keep It Full, which I think is a great alternative to Buxom. And this one is called Nude Shimmer. So let's just see how this does on top. I know it's gonna be a little sheer and that's kind of what I want. Showing up pretty golden though. You're not quite as sheer as I thought. Just a little bit. Ooh, that's it. Just mush it in a little bit. Gosh, I love this look. I really am so happy with the way this turned out. Of course, we're gonna do maybe just a little more blush just cause that's when it feels really done, you know? Just a little more of this, gotta be careful though. Ooh. Again, this is the shade Daring Rosewood right up in here. Oh, that's nice for this look. I love it alongside that green eye. Nice and high. It's giving the lift. Ready for, what are we ready for today? It actually does not matter. It does not matter. If you like doing makeup, you do a full look and I don't care what you got going on that day. You wear this to Rural King and you just show them, okay? Mm. We're taking the headband off. Oh my gosh, look, I had like a faux bang there for a second. Okay, hold on. The way my hair was coming off of the bun. Oh, this is terrible. Yeah, not, not it. Love a good drugstore look. Thank you guys so much for taking time to watch. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got a little inspiration from that fun lower lash line. I'm going to be doing some more fun lower lash lines as I do my makeup this week. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you again very soon. I love you. Bye.